Hello everyone, what's going on? And welcome back to our My Player Career Mode. Thank you for taking the time to watch one of my videos. I hope you are all feeling fantastic, having an awesome day. If you missed the previous episode, go back and watch it. I don't want to spoil it, but I am going to be showing you how we got on in just a moment. But the final match of that episode against Atletico was insane. So if you've not seen it, go back, check it out. And uh, yeah, come back and watch this episode. I am recording this pretty much straight after I finish recording that one. So thank you for all the support you have shown this series and that episode. I'll try and respond to your comments when I can. If you have left me any comments on that video, then I won't be able to act upon them in this video because that last episode hasn't gone live yet. But in store today then, in fact, let's start with what happened last time. A 2-2 draw against Atletico, a 3-1 win against Sociedad and a 6-1 victory against Espanyol was how we performed. Into today's episode then, we take on Mallorca, we take on Osasuna and Valladolid as really we have to get nine points from nine. And that is because Barcelona are six clear at the top of the table at this moment in time. So let's get started with the episode. I will show you our stats to begin and then we'll get straight into the first match of the day. 87 appearances, 62 goals, 45 assists is how we stand. But here we are then, first game of the day as we take on Mallorca, the two lineups on your screen. Let's jump into it, sit back, relax, and hopefully enjoy. In terms of a start here, it's been a bit of a slow one from Villarreal. We just can't seem to keep the ball at the moment, giving it away a few times under no pressure. So let's calm things down right here and just get us a bit of time on the ball. Cucurella with the overlap down the left. He's got Musiala and myself making moves. He goes all the way down the left here, Cucurella. Now the ball back into my feet. The touch is absolutely sublime to bring it under control pretty much straight away. And actually, they've backed off so much here. Mallorca allowed me to turn back on the left side. The shot was in. Good save, goalkeeper. Can't remember if I said this in the intro, but 900 likes is the target as usual. And I thank you for all the support. I'm sure we will smash that because you're all legends. Corner ball for us to take. Is this the first goal of the day? Let's find out. Delivery into that near post. Calabria challenging. Goes back out to me here once more. Now Cramrich. Why is this being given? Is it because I'm offside maybe? Looks like it. Fair enough. Parejo. Cramrich. Nunez. You see this so many times. The amount of times we get this ball forward at speed. Nunez's ball picks me out. But there's only Cramrich in the middle. So I'm going to go back to Cucurella and restart the attack again to buy us some time and space. Musiala. Cramrich. Saar. Back. Parejo, Musiala. We've got to be careful we don't overplay this as we often do. Cramrich didn't get the connection on the ball. We've ended up stealing it off Romero though. Cramrich, and there's the goal. Mallorca wanted too much time to play their way out. They were not going to get it. We were fast at winning it back after we were a little bit too casual on the ball in the first place. Cramrich's pass didn't have the power necessary to get through to me, but it doesn't matter because we work hard to win it straight back. There you go. And then at that, uh, that time, Nunez finds Cramrich and they're punished for the mistake, Mallorca. Right on the stroke of half-time, Villarreal going in search for their second. Romero heads away. It's come from a corner, this. Cramrich controlling. Now Calabria back to Cramrich. Any moment now, the referee will end this half off and it will be the end of this first half. So we have to try and get the chance anyway. Good move here to turn away. The ball back in. There's Cramrich. It's two. And there is that second goal. We were supposed to have a minute of added time. We've played over three. Mallorca will not be happy. Meanwhile, Villarreal will be loving it. We're just having to work so hard to create these chances because although Mallorca are 1-0 down, they've still got a lot of players in and around their penalty area. So space is limited. Kramrich gets his second here with his head, though. So here is Tagliafico. Mallorca invited forward at the start of the second half. Tagliafico's ball back in. Botman with his arms by his side. Blocks the shot, but it'll go here for Mallorca to keep on the attack as we don't really remain composed when trying to get the ball out of our defence. So we give it straight back and there's a shot for Boy. It will be 2-1. Cucurella just doesn't even want to close him down by the looks of it. Watches him control it and then watches him shoot the ball into the back of the net. If we're not going to close them down, that's what's going to happen. Really is as simple as that. It's just that lack of composure really from us, you know, when we're trying to get the ball back up the field of play. We head it straight to Mallorca, who keep the pressure on at the start of the half, and then that's their reward. And now it makes it a little bit more nervy for us. So we will have to try and find our third just to restore our two-goal advantage. Musiala, Cramrich. Once again, another pass misplaced by Cramrich. It's a good job he scored a couple of goals today because his overall performance has not been phenomenal other than that. His hold-up play has been not great, and 
passing. He's misplaced about three or four passes now. We all could get themselves back on level terms right here. We are going to be livid. Ben White blocks it. It's a corner ball. Can we please wake up? Because at the start of the half, we are all over the shop. Chamberlain, Soriano, Jorginho into the near post. They get the shot away again. It's not cleared away for the moment. Botman now has it. Cramrich finds Nunez. Nunez sees my run. He releases the ball. We're up against Gonzalez. Trying to get the pace to get round him. The angle's tight, so he took the shot on still. Oh! Nearly ends up going in! Wow! That would have been quite an own goal, wouldn't it? In the end, the post saves. Mallorca. Ten minutes to play. And whilst it's not been our best performance here, especially in the second half, we are holding on to a 2-1 lead, which we'll have ourselves a throw here. Cucurella to take it. Not sure what happened at half-time. The team talk from Mallorca's manager has worked, though, because they've come out and look like a different side since the restart. Musiala testing Bulka. And it is a corner ball for us to take. Can we restore our two-goal advantage here? Parejo's delivery near post. Oh, we win it. Calabria wins it. And it's again saved. Nunez, Musiala, Cramrich. Musiala again, Nunez, Cramrich. Good work. What's Cramrich going to do here? He finds Musiala who tries to place it. No power on the shot. It was easy for Bulka. And two minutes to go. If we do get the victory, even though we haven't played well, it's still three points. And we wanted nine from nine today. We do not want to start having dropped some. Botman intercepting. Musiala's got me to the left. There's the pass as well. I'm just going to hold on to the ball. Make no mistake like I did against Real to give away possession, which allowed them to go up the other end and score. Nunez holding off the challenge. And that's full time. Cramrich is double. Caesars win the game by two goals to one. But overall, Villarreal, not a great performance in match day one. We move on, though. Some good news for you as well. Atletico have just dropped points. They were playing uh, the day before us and they drew with Valladolid 2-2, which means we are two points ahead of them and solely hold second place on points. The issue is Barca won again. So until we play them, that might have to be the first time they lose a game this season when we eventually do play them again, having already played them once in that close 3-2 game against them. Up next, it's Osasuna for us and it is Atletico Mallorca, Barca, Real, El Clasico, Real Madrid. As much as I don't want you to win the game because you'll get closer to us, I want you to win it because it takes points off of Barca. And so here they are then, as you see, 4-4-2. For both sides, the exact same formation. I'm not sure there's any changes to our starting eleven. No, there is not. So it's as we were following that 2-1 victory. Into game we go. And we know that we have to be at our best to grab results. We've seen that anyone on their given day can give anybody a game. Atletico just dropping points to Valladolid. Cross in for, for Nunez. No offside flag, 1-0 Villarreal. And then he said Cramrich. It was Nunez who popped up to volley home. And that pretty much means that now there is a little bit less nerves for us. You know, I was thinking, we hadn't played well against Mallorca. What will we see from us here? And then if Osasuna, you know, start playing well, what's that going to have an effect on us? Well, four-minute goal sets us up to just kind of control the rest of this game now. Intercepted by Cucurella. Musiala. Now Saar. Saar instantly plays the first-time ball to me. And we see the run here from Cramrich. Nunez blocked his own teammate's shot. Cramrich may have been fine in the back of the net for 2-0, but Darwin Nunez doing Osasuna a favour defensively. And now there is a break on for Osasuna. Shot saved by Rooney. Imagine the scenes if they'd have got their equaliser right as Nunez blocked us potentially going 2-0 up. They still might from the corner. Saad does well initially, but nobody reacts other than Mateta, who struck the volley so sweetly and almost... In fact, a matter of a few inches is away from giving Osasuna an equaliser. And even though we have scored the goal, right? You're seeing. I mean, it's not done yet. Nunez. Parejo. Good touch. Saar looking to place it. Bernardoni with a save. Nunez gets there. 2-0 Villarreal. And Darwin Nunez grabs his second. I wasn't sure he was actually going to make the rebound. It was a good effort from Saar who looked to place it. And then, decent enough save. But... When you see this rebound, Nunez is having to use all of his frame to stretch to get the ball. And then, not only that, but from a tight angle, he turns it into a goal. Really, really smart work from Darwin Nunez. Botman controls. Now plays it out to me. Here is Musiala. 
Through for Saar. Nunez. Saar again. Nunez. Saar. Cramrich. Great save. Bernardoni. Musiala's header just over the bar. The football was class from Villarreal. It really was worked well. It's made Saar at the heart of it. And then Cramrich's effort. Smart stop. Bernardoni. Also soon I have to be careful because we're starting to take over here. And this might get out of their reach very soon. Corner ball for Villarreal. It's Parejo to deliver. And there's no one at that near post. It's a free header away. Unfortunately for Osasuna, that free header has gone straight to me. Now here's Botman. Keeping us on the attack. Calabria through for Nunez. Nunez is ball back in. We get the shot away, but it's a good defensive block. And now Mateta can carry Osasuna forwards. He's got to try and find a pass, though, because immediately we were on to try and make the challenge. And who's going to get there first? Well, nobody in a Villarreal shirt is the answer. And it's still then. Why does this happen? Like, there's so many players who are making moves where they don't need to go. I was tempted to not try and use the secondary contain button to ask my players to close the ball down because I don't want to get them dragged out of position, but they do it on their own anyway. Like, look, there's three, four Villarreal players who go to the ball there unnecessarily. And that just leaves this massive gap in the middle, which Thiago Thomas says, thank you very much, goes into, it's 2-1. Parejo, Musiala. Now Botman, forward for Nunez. We're back out for the second half. Nunez with the run. Cucurella does give us one on the left as well. There's the ball to Cucurella. Musiala, Saar. Saar for Cramrich. Flicks the ball up. Not sure why, but he's found Calabria anyway. Ball back in from Calabria is good. And it's 3-1. We met with the cross. And we fired into the goal before Bernardoni could even react. It was hit with such venom, by the way, from Calabria, this cross. I just had to kind of make sure I got something on the end of it. And then... And we do, as I say, Bernardoni going back the opposite way. Can't adjust his feet quick enough. And that is the third. Two goal advantage restored. And we can look ahead to this rest of the second half and make sure we don't let Osasuna back in this. Nacho Vidal. Cucurella hasn't got close to him. There's the cross. Botman heads it back in the middle. Ruben Garcia's there. You can't be heading the ball back into a dangerous area like that. And Osasuna once more back in the game. There is fight. In the home side. They're not willing to give up. And we are having to be so careful, so concentrated. Because if not, this is what can happen. Why the ball has been headed back into the middle is the first question. But then, nobody reacts. We saw it earlier when it happened from the corner. Mateta was close to grabbing an equaliser when we were one the up. And that time, we were lucky. This time, we're not. Parejo trying to force the ball out. It's with Barisic. Now Klassen. As there is 15 minutes to go. Mateta. There's the ball for Thiago Thomas. What a chance. 15 minutes is a long time in football. Enough time for drastic changes. And had Osasuna have got the third there. The momentum and the confidence they're playing with. I wonder if they may have gone on to win the game. They still could. There's the delivery, and Luke Bacchio is the player to it for Osasuna. Parejo collects the loose ball. We're still holding the wide position here. Back into the middle for Musiala. Now Nunez. Nunez with the ball back in. The challenge coming through. It's Parejo with the ball forward. Offside flag will be raised. It will not count. Hang on, it will. What? What? Diop has scored. It's 4-2. I was certain, certain we'd see the offside flag. I have to get another look at this. Because otherwise, how? How is he onside? Hang on. Wow, there's three players who asked the question of the official. And it wasn't given. And you know, I have to look at this in the instant replay to see just how Diop was onside. Because right now, that goal could have just secured us the victory. So this is the moment that Parejo kicks the ball. And as you see, Diamande isn't out quick enough. And that's the reason that Diop is onside as the ball comes through. It's Diamande who's played him on. And it is Villarreal 4, Osasuna 2. The goal stands and rightfully so. And any moment now, that will be the end of the game. A Villa's ball for Nunez. He will play it to me. Space to take the shot on. It's blocked. And that is going to do it. Osasuna 2, Villarreal 4, the final score. Another bit of a scare for us, but another three points. Six from six, two wins from two. And now we look for our third 
in three in this episode. Man of the match performance from us, but the most important part was what happened in the other games. They've yet to go on. Remember, El Clasico, Barca against Real. We skip the day and we will see what the result will be. They've won again. They just don't stop. They're relentless. 2-0 victory over Real. Atletico bounce back with a 3-1 win over Mallorca. So we're still six behind them. And I've just seen as well the Copa de España draw has been made. And would you guess it? We're playing against Real. Like, look at all the teams we could have got. And yet we're against Real Madrid in the round of 32. Luck is just not on our side right there. Valladolid. Last game of the episode, Estadio de la Ceramica. There's the two lineups. Diop starts on the right, Avila up front, Cramrich and Saar. Must be on the bench here. Ruli, Cucurella, White, Botman and Calabria, the usual back four. And I don't expect us to lose this, but we've got away with two performances in which we weren't at our best. Will we get away with it for a third time? Aguado finding Kennedy. Good tackle, Botman. He's won the first one. And the second. Parejo, Avila, Nunez. Break is on. Nunez's pass. Well, it leaves a lot to be desired. But ref, surely that has to be a red. We're completely away. He's gone straight through the back of me. It's got to be, and it is. Sadie Janko sent off for an outrageous tackle. And this surely now means Valladolid are in for a tough afternoon. I don't know what he's thinking. Four minutes on the clock and he does that. Yeah, as soon as the challenge came in, I knew it had to be a red. We were away and plus it was just not anywhere near the ball. And as soon as that's happened, we won the lot because Darwin Nunez has got through and fired home. Valladolid are in real trouble here now. They've got to play out 85 minutes with 10 men against one of the league leaders and the top scorers in the league. And like I say, it's going to be a tough afternoon now for Valladolid as Musiala finds Nunez. Nunez to Avila, it's two. Just like that. Valladolid crumbling. And Villarreal cruising. Atletico. Valladolid, they would decide to take points off Atletico when they drop them. I don't know how, because from what we've seen in this opening ten minutes, this looks like it might be a field day for us. Avila, Diop. Nunez, look at the space that has been given to us here. And it's got to be three. What is happening? There's so much space. I don't know if Valadolid have actually brought on another defender. I think they might just be playing with three at the back. Because as soon as we won the ball back, there is just an abundance of open field to utilise. Nunez lays me the ball. One touch back inside. Weaker right foot, just side foot it. Pass, Leo Yardim in the goal. Calabria intercepts the pass. Musiala plays it towards me. And now as we cut back inside, we've got Avila for number four. He's hit the outside the post. It's gone wide. And our average of goals right now, this is the 20th minute. Had that have gone in, would have been scoring a goal once every five minutes. Free kick, Valladolid. Sanchez with it forward. Esposito. Sends it back for Monchu. There's space here for Aguado on the right side. Cucurella now does go over. To stop the cross. Back heel for Monchu again. He's gone in the middle for Oscar. We need to get closer to these players. It's nice football. Esposito with a strike at the end of it as well. And if Rooney wasn't alert, it would have been 3-1. And that's the first time we've seen a bit of Valladolid attacking quality. Musiala with a header out from the corner. And you can see as a Villa's ball into my feet doesn't quite work out as intended. But Valladolid in trouble again because here is Nunez. He's got a Villa to his left. Nunez with the ball into the middle. Joaquin away. It'll fall for Parejo who heads it down for me. We tried to place it. And Leo Yardim catches the ball with ease. And even though they're out of 10 men, we are giving them a lot of time on the ball here. As again, Esposito can turn inside and look for the ball into the middle. Calabria's there. Musiala finding Parejo. Parejo to me. Nunez makes the move. Avila's also to my right. There is Avila. Forward for Nunez. Nunez has to find the right pass again. Looks for me. Yavi Sanchez as we go sliding in to try and block Yardim's clearance. Parejo keeps us on the ball for the moment. And it's just bouncing all over the place here. We need a bit of composure. And there it is as we find Diop. Diop can find me. And there is space to take it on. And it's in the top corner. They are playing with a back three. I have worked it out. But it's 4-0 Villarreal. And we don't look like stopping anytime soon with attacks. Wave after wave of yellow 
as we go in search for more and more goals. I will give them credit, Valladolid. They're not trying to sit behind the ball. They are actually trying to create something themselves as well. We saw Rooney make a good save earlier on. It's not like they're sat with 10 players behind the ball just trying to do damage limitation. But that in turn is costing them because we have so much space when we want it. Straight from kickoff, they've given it away again. Nunez is to my right. And he's now got a Villa to his right. Is this number five? Essentially, instantly, it's five. Double figures, anyone. Because it's a real possibility here, you know. Cucurella on the overlap. Second half underway. This could be the dream start if Cucurella can find me. Nunez, am I on side? I believe I am. I am on side. It's six and it's the hat trick. Six, nil, Villarreal. Remember that record that we're chasing? Every little goal helps. And the more we get here, the closer we get to breaking the record. Four minutes into this game, Janko gets sent off and they're already on the back foot. They instantly concede. From that point on, we've just not let up. And you don't expect us to do so because of how good we are. Nunez's ball will find me out here as we look to cut it back into the middle. There's the pass for Musiala who takes it backwards for some reason but still finds the finish. It's seven. Musiala's finish. I'm not sure why he went backwards but it worked out. Real Madrid are winning elsewhere but we don't care about that. I think they're three lop or two lop against Bilbao want to say. We've hit seven right here. I said I felt sorry for Valladolid. Well, they're not helping themselves at all though. So they really have to try and just... I would have gone for damage limitation personally. When it gets to 4-0, there's no chance you're coming back. Just make it less embarrassing, the result. Avila, Nunez. Nunez now in the box. Avila again. Chance to strike. He looked to pick out the far corner. Leo Yardin went scrambling across his goal. It was wide in the end. But when we struggled in match day one and two, we didn't play well. It's not like we dominated those games. We gave up goals. This will be a handball, in fact. It's not a handball. Don't know what the referee was watching there. I definitely used my hand to control it. But yeah, when you look at those games and then you see us play here and watch what we're doing here. This is totally different. 8-0 Villarreal. A cheeky little chip to finish this one. Our fourth of the game. We've still got 20 plus minutes. We still have more time. We still have more time. We might get to 10-0. Just padding my goal stats now as well as we were up to 21 in 22 matches, which is insane. We're not even a striker. We're not even playing up front. And we've hit 21 goals in 22 games. As here we go again. Avila, Nunez. Nunez with the ball through to me. I've seen the run on the other side. It's got to be number nine. The strike comes through and Leo Yardim can't hold it. I'm actually wincing a little bit at this right now. I feel so bad for Valladolid, but at the same time, I feel so good for us. Ten minutes to play. Kennedy for Valladolid. And I appreciate that some of you will be watching this now. And I have seen some comments in the past talking about realism. Now, 9-0 in this game. Maybe it's not the most realistic result in the world. But at the same time, when we've got the opportunity to attack, I'm going to take it. I'm not just going to, you know, sit back and not attack just because. So... Here is Cucurella. We are looking for goal 10. Cucurella to Morales. Morales to me. And it is goal 10. We've hit five. Double figures with six minutes to go from the Estadio de la Ceramica. You're not dreaming. Don't pinch yourselves. You're seeing us score 10 in a single game. And we've got five of the 10. Faladolid aren't even in the relegation zone either. And they recently drew 2-2 with Atletico. How? Three minutes left of this game. A memorable match indeed. Esposito trying to get past Botman. One back. Coquelin's ball forward. We are into the final minute. Morales. Mandy. Mandy is on and he's in for Villarreal as we are in for number six of the game for us. We've hit 11. I, I can't. I, I can't even... I can't even tell you what has gone on in this game because truly I have no idea. When the game started and they get that red card, yeah, sure, I'm thinking we'll win the game. Probably comfortably. Would I have expected 11 goals? 
No. Certainly not. I can only imagine what you lovely people are thinking watching this one play out. I have absolutely no way to describe it. So I'll just let it play out on the screen and stay with you as we'll sign off the rest of this episode. Six goals from left midfield. Two assists. How many shots did we have overall as a team? 19 shots. Some of the other results then. Real Madrid 3, Bilbao 1 was the final score there. We've hit level 33 as well. And we'll see what it means for the table. We've got Real in the Cup, obviously, coming up, which I'll be honest, I'll be shocked if we get through. I really will. Standings, round of 32 with the Copa de España. Not bothered, don't care. Right, La Liga. Here we are then. So, we drew 2-2 with Atletico. That was last episode as we go towards the bottom of January, which we'll see what happened in the previous game between Barcelona and Almeria. They won 5-1. So, Barca win again. Atletico won 3-1. Our 11-0 victory <laughs> over Valladolid, who are 8th. They're on, they're on minus 9 goal difference. They conceded 41 this season. 11 of them coming in that game right there. Takes us to 83 goals already. Pure insanity. Really, really is. Anyway, I want to say a huge thank you for watching this episode. I do hope you've enjoyed it. I want to say much love to you all as well for all of the incredible support you continue to show me. I, 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 yeah, I don't know how to describe that last game. I, I appreciate it. it's not the most realistic thing in the world, but there's not really anything I can do other than not try to attack. And that for me is counterintuitive because I want to play the game. And again, I'm on ultimate difficulty, you know? So, what more can I do, essentially, unless I think about some sliders? But I've said this many times before. I don't particularly like using sliders because, one, I just think if the game's made, it should be the challenge itself. And two, I feel like it loses a little bit of authenticity when you lose when you use sliders a little bit. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll look at it in the future. But for now, a huge thank you for watching this episode. Stay safe, everyone. Have a great day. Have a great evening. Look after each other. And take care, and I'll see you all again for another episode very, very soon. Until then, adios.